write a mail asking about any open data science position and adding the cover letter for three to five years of data science role with experience in Python, SQL, Excel, and Tableau. Is AI going to give you a job or take your job? In this video, I will talk about ChatGPT, which might change the world. You either have to keep a watch or you have to change your life with it. ChatGPT has started a very intense conversation. He thinks it's the most revolutionary he thinks it's the iPhone. GPT. OpenAI is the tool up for public testing in November 2022. Venture capital interest in AI startups has skyrocketed. ChatGPT is probably one of the fastest growing technology that the world has ever seen. Time it took to reach 1 million users. Netflix took around 3.5 years. Facebook took around 10 months. Spotify took 5 months. Instagram took 2.5 months. While iPhone took 74 days. While ChatGPT took only 5 days to reach, to reach this milestone. ChatGPT is a large language model created by OpenAI. And it allows you to hold a conversation with it. You can talk to it, you can ask it questions, you can think of it like a, you know, like talking to a very knowledgeable person that knows all the things in the internet. It can respond to user input in a conversation and perform numerous language tasks like text summarization, language translations, and many more. If you're heading out for a dinner, you can ask it, can you suggest some good veg restaurants for Chinese food in Gurgaon? We can see that it has suggested some of the you know very good restaurants like one in 32nd Avenue, one in mainland China, etc. It is pretty good. It can help you with write your code with instructions, draft an email, draft a cover letter for your job, write your resume, help you rewrite your dating profile, and many many more. I personally have been using it as a tutor, you know, to learn things fast like machine learning, Python data analysis, statistics. I've been using it to write emails and, you know, of course, finding mistakes in my code. Hi, I'm Atish Jain. I'm a data scientist working here in Gurgaon, India. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. In this video, I'm specifically going to talk about how you can use ChatGPT for learning any coding language. With the help of ChatGPT, let's design a custom study plan for you. So, for the specific example, we are going to ask you to design a study plan for you to learn any coding language in Python you know, for data sciences. Although you can use the same structure for any other language or any other technical skill. So I'm going to show you guys now a framework that you know you can get a better study plan from ChatGPT. I adopted this from you know like the general 5W framework which is who, what, when, where and why. Who is, what role do you want to, you know, ChatGPT to play to give, in giving you a study plan? Then, what is, what exactly do you want to learn? When is, what's your timeline? Like, when do you want to learn these things? When do you want to complete these things? Where is, where do you want to learn it to do, you know, have pre your preferences for online courses? Do you have preferences for, you know, free things or uh, do you have preferences for text-based courses and why, why is, what's their goal, you know, in for learning Python, for learning data sciences. By giving it more context, you're able to get it, you know, more out of the tailored responses. Okay, so let's start with the basics. So the first thing I'm going to do is use ChatGPT for learning Python. I'm going to make it define a roadmap for me. I want to learn Python for data sciences. Okay, so I added, give me a roadmap to learn Python for data science and data analysis. Okay, so it has started writing out the roadmap for me. I'm gonna wait for it to finish.
So basically it has given me a nine step, very generic roadmap, which is probably not as helpful, you know, although it has provided me learn the basics of Python programming, understand NumPy and Pandas library, learn data visualization, master machine learning concepts, apply machine learning algorithms, learn deep learning, apply deep learning, learn big data, practice the real world data science. So, you know, it, as, it, as you can look at, it seems very general. Now, I'm going to ask it more specific. So, I'm going to ask it more specifically so that it can give me better answer. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't know how to do. People don't know how to know, you know, ask smart questions to get a smart answer. That's why a lot of people, you know, are not able to use it properly. We are going to do exactly that. How to make our questions smarter. Okay. So let me rephrase my question. I want to learn Python for data science and data analysis. Can you create a roadmap to learn it in three months with weekly plan and resources for learning? Okay. So I am going to run it and let's see what it gives me this time. It's basically giving me a weekly plan, including links as well as different resources that I can use for learning Python. So let's, you know, quickly go through this roadmap in the month one, week one, uh, you know, it is saying me to learn the basics of Python programming, uh, functions, control structures, data types, etc. with the resources from Code Academy, you know, learn Python the hard way. In the week two, it is asking me to learn NumPy basics from data camp. Then in the week three, it is asking, asking me to learn pandas. In the week four, it is asking me to learn the visualization libraries like Matplotlib, Seaborn from data camp, etc. In the next month, which is month two, it is asking me to learn the statistics and probability theory, including descriptive statistics, probability distribution, hypothesis testing, etc. And the resources from where I can learn. In the week six, it is asking me to you know, do exploratory data analysis. In the week seven, it is asking me to learn libraries like scikit-learn. And in the week eight, it is learning me how to build machine learning models, including model performance metrics, cross validation, etc. And in the week nine, it is asking me to bring, you know, create deep learning models, including artificial neural networks. You know, I have previously created a complete roadmap as well, which I'm linking somewhere here. So now, once you have learned the data science and Python, you do a project that centers around the things that you have learned before. I hope that makes sense. So it's like the iterative process, you know, the iterative learning cycle that is very focused on the projects. So this was the missing piece that ChatGPT was not able to provide. But since you know that one of the things that ChatGPT can help you with is actually coming up with the great project ideas. So let's talk about the next, you know, uh, how to use ChatGPT to generate project ideas. Say you have now learned exploratory data analysis. You went through the courses and now you want to do a project on it. So you don't know what to do, what kind of project you should do. You have no idea. Okay. You like to do a project on one of your favorite TV series, uh, which is, you know, Game of Thrones. Who doesn't like Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones is amazing. I want to do a project about, you know, Game of Thrones, but I don't exactly know what and I wanted to, you know, uh, be about exploratory data analysis because that's what I just learned. So here is a potential prompt. If you are an experienced data scientist, create an exploratory data analysis project, data science project about the probability of a character, you know, death of a character in Game of Thrones. So we can see that we are, you know, getting the prompt output. Uh, it has given us the project outline. Uh, first part is data collection. You know, it has given me the link of a Kegel website, uh, you know, for the data where we have the Game of Thrones data. So yeah, now the next thing is data cleaning, then data exploration. You know, once the data is clean, we can start exploring it. Some questions we can explore is, uh, how many deaths, you know, uh, characters died in the siege and which character died the most, which house had the highest death rate, you know, is there any correlation between characters age and their probability of death, then data modeling. Finally, we can use statistical model, Python libraries to complete this project, you know, pandas, matplotlib, scikit-learn, and then conclusion, you know, 
so this is pretty much uh, the outlines that would be required you know to do this project so what if you know we asked chat gpt to actually write the code for this project uh, so let's see if it can give us the you know code output for building this project in python so yeah you know we can see that it is giving us the code for doing the you know uh, project importing the libraries then you know loading the data set and then dropping unnecessary columns handling the missing values removing duplicates then doing data explorations how many characters died in each season you know which character died the most and so on so yeah the code looks pretty legitimate to me it looks like it would work does anybody want to make a batch on this write in the comments if you know you know you think the code will work or not i am mostly skeptical about some parts although that's me cheating a little bit you know because i was playing around with chat gpt before so i'm going to copy the code and let's try running it let's paste the code in our jupyter notebook so now i'm going to do you know splitting the code uh, the first part is importing the libraries and reading the csv i have run this code now let's you know print the head of the data frame and see how it looks like so yeah these are the columns in the data frame now let's run the code block by block you know so the first block that i have run is you know um giving the output of the number of deaths in each season then the second code block is the you know top 10 characters with the most number of deaths now the third block that i'm going to run okay oops it has given us the error key error of house it looks like there is no column house in our data set let's run the another code block so this is also you know giving the error uh there is no you know season of that then again there is another error so yeah it looks like you know the code though looked very legitimate but you know is having some issues regarding the columns so superficially you know it seems like a very legit code but it doesn't actually work so chat gpt project creation you know gets rating 3 out of 5 uh let me know if you actually do this project also let me know in the comments if there is any other projects you know that chai gpt made you uh, made for you that you think is pretty cool so before we end this video i just wanted to talk a little bit more about the limitations of the chai gpt we already saw here that it could generate code that doesn't work and uh, it's all about uh, able to provide all the informations that you need to come up with the optimal solutions like you know creating the study plan the answer is that it gives you somewhat you know generic uh, answers about many things at a beginner level uh, very beginner level so as you are advanced in your you know coding language this might not be able to be as useful for you but it's still pretty useful for the basic tasks and basic code snippets i hope you found this video very helpful uh, chat gpt has really fundamentally changed my own workflow and i think it's going to keep changing and i'm going to learn how to use it better over time i think that's something you know that you all should also explore because i genuinely do think that this is the future let me know how you have found this video how you have been using chat gpt and you know for learning coding language or for any other areas of your life i hope this video was useful thank you so much for watching this and i will see you in the next video bye bye